uh, buying according to JMI products. This would be an instruction, uh, a video on how to install the TMT drive system. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, be sure to get the wheels for these light bridge scopes. And we just got an email from a guy who said, I use my scope 10 times more now than I did before I had the wheels on a 16 inch scope because it's so easy just to wheel it out and use it. So uh, you want to think about, think about that. The, uh, the TNT is a device that it will track, you can train it to track the stars. Uh, now, it's not intended to be for photography because of uh, several reasons. Uh, stars move differently at different speeds. In fact, if you watch the stars in elevation when they're coming up high in the east, there's very little azimuth motor. The azimuth motor is almost stalled, very, very little action there. And when you get past the zenith, then it has the elevation motor has to reverse directions go the other way. And you're looking at the south, it's all azimuth, very little elevation. So in each part of the sky, you're going to have to train this to follow the stars. Uh, and this is the hand control actually that helps you do that. And we've got two knobs here. And uh, we have a stop position for each one. When they're in this position, they're stopped. And so when I move it up, I'm increasing the speed in one direction. Uh, if I need, if I'm going the wrong direction, I can actually reverse it to stop and start it in the other direction to receive, you know, maximum in the opposite direction. For both atoms and elevation, you can run the motors either way. This is the off position for the motor and then maximum. Now, as you're training this to follow the stars in the sky, you may discover that the star is drifting you know, the left or the right a little bit, moving up in the eyepiece. And we've got a high-speed centering switch. This high-speed centering switch allows you to recenter it about roughly eight times the normal tracking speed. So in both azimuth and elevation, these are the switches then that you can use. Press the button and all of a sudden come right back to center. Now you can go back and say, well, I was a little slow, I was a little fast. I can change the motor speed, but you can recenter it without affecting the motor speed of either motor. And so that's really cool. In fact, I find, uh, I'll actually track the object sometimes just, just pressing the, the button here, you know, and, and it just it just floats in space as it moves back to the center of the object, you know, and it's not like you grab it manually and you overshoot and, you know, it, it's you know, a vibration and interrupts your viewing because it's just a vibration and um, had my wife out with this and, uh, and she couldn't believe people do it manually when she saw how nicely this works. So, anyhow, that's the hand control and to install the, uh, the system, we'll kind of go over that. Uh, basically, then we have dual drive, just three motors that run this. And uh, these would be your azimuth motors. They have rubber tires. We'll give you a replacement rubber tires. Uh, and they're loaded with a spring. So each, each motor, <coughs> excuse me, each motor has a spring loaded effect here. And that's accomplished by this uh, piano wire, the spring, spring wire. So to install this, and some of this may seem a little bit intimidating, actually, when you, when you get to you look at all the parts, but actually, it's really very simple to install. Everything is installed with tiny little uh, number four screws. Uh, most of them are half inch long. You will have to drill a hole. You will not be able to get these screws started without drilling a little pilot hole. So I would suggest that what you do would be set this up so the motors are up against the ring. You just slot it. In the center of the slot, you put in one screw, drill a hole, put the screw in with a washer in this case, you want a washer on top of it. And so when you've got that one in there, then you come over and drill the adjacent one to the other side. You don't want to drill both these holes, I guarantee if you drill both these holes, you're going to have some friction loading, it's going to be dragging on one side or the other, but it's much, you guys are much better if you drill one hole, put that screw in, then you come back and try to center this one. If you've got any friction here, if this thing is, is, doesn't want to move, you've got problems because it's got to move free in order to get the proper loading on these rubber drive tires. Did I tell you we're going to give you extras? I forgot. Uh, you get some extra rubber tires should you find some wear on this. When you've got that done, the uh, center hole is a, the only screw that's longer. This is three-quarter, number four, but it's a three-quarter inch long. We leave the head up about a quarter of an inch so it can grab this piano wire. Uh, you'll notice we've actually put a little bit of a bend in this piano wire to take off a little bit of the tension. And, of course, the screw could be moved here, actually, if you're going to, if you need to increase or decrease the tension. But both of these all have to be able to slide in the, the slot freely. Now, while we've uh, got the tube off, I'll talk a little bit about the elevation. 
Uh, by the way, on the 16-inch light bridge, we're going to give you an extra sheet of plastic. Uh, this sheet of plastic you would put under the rocker. The, the friction pads here cause a little too much friction for this to move freely. By putting this to 30 thousandths of an inch of plastic under the Lazy Susan, then we, we, we get freedom of enough movement so that we get a good response in asthma. So basically what you do is you take the rocker off on the ground board, you put this sheet of plastic, then you put the metal sheet down that you have when you assemble it, you it. then you put the Lazy Susan on, then you put the next sheet of metal that you need to provide, and then you put the rocker on. So only on the 16 and 12 and the uh, smaller ones, we don't have any problems, don't have any problem with that. Now, in order to get this thing to move good in, in elevation, we had to put it on rollers. There was so much friction on this casting. It doesn't feel like it at the eyepiece, but actually there is. This casting on the tubes, there's so much friction there, we had to raise that up. We did that by these rollers, uh, this assembly here that has little roller bearings in there. And uh, so you would basically install this on the side of the, inside of the rocker base, one for each side, you do one for each side. And uh, we've already preset the height, you don't have to worry about the height because these little tabs are going to set the height on the unit. We have slots here so that if you don't get it quite centered, you can reset it and, and bolt it in. And so basically you set it on there, and if you look at the rocker, you see that it matches the curve. Drill your hole, put a screw in, drill a hole, there's no washers here needed. Uh, and on each side would be the same. Uh, you know, one of these on each side. And so that would uh, that would cover that part of the insulation. Why would we have this uh, tube off here? I can show you the battery. Um, it has, we're providing you with a 12 volt battery. It's a, a two and a half amp, 2.9 amps. It has a red tab and a black tab. The red is a positive. Now it's very important that you get the right plug in the red, the black side. If you don't, when you go to try to charge this battery, you're going to blow the fuse. We have provided the fuse in the uh, assembly here, and uh, we're using a 5-amp fuse. Actually, uh, you could, you, if it's an emergency, you could go to a 10-amp. I would know if you go over a 10-amp fuse. Uh, the power is obviously going to take that kind of power, but um, you put the fuse in there for safety. If you ever have a short, you don't have a meltdown. So, but there's a red tab. On the fuse, the fuse is the plus. It has a red jack on it, and you want to put that on the red side of the battery. Okay, and then the other one is just sort of a clear, you know, plug. You put that on the other side. Just be sure you get the red to the red. And uh, the battery sits in the corner of the rocker box, and uh, we're going to give you a tab here, a couple of these stick-on tabs to hold the wire, uh, to dress it around so it doesn't just pull the breeze. And we're going to give you a four-inch strip of Velcro. It's a dual-sided Velcro. You can put that on there, slide it in the frame, and it'll keep it supported as it needs to be. It could even actually could be installed on the outside of the rocker box here, too. It would be easier access, but uh, we'll leave that up to you if we work either way. And uh, at this point now, we're going to uh, have to install the tube, so we'll shut the camera down for a moment and pick it up in a minute. This is recording. <coughs> Okay, now we're going to talk about the uh, elevation clutch, drive clutch, that will move your telescope in elevation. Um, you, you're probably going to want to, uh, you know, in, install this on the opposite side from the IP solar. If you notice on the viewing side of the scope, you have this IP solar, which would interfere with our motor drive. And so that's one reason we put it on this side. So this would be the drive clutch, and uh, we need to attach to this casting. And so we, what we have here is uh, some A32 button head screws. The little heads on these screws will slide under the casting, and then you'll put in one more to hold it in place. And we typically would, uh, it's the same concept we do with our computers. We have computers for this, you know, all the light bridge telescopes, and uh, it's the same concept. So what we do, you just slide this over the casting here, and then the third screw, uh, you would install it on the back side. And I'm trying to do this with my left hand, actually. If I'm right hand, I probably have to try it from this side. These are going to have to be tight. Uh, if you have any hesitancy in elevation, it means that these are slipping. The heads of these screws are slipping on this casting. Um, okay, I got it. 
So we're going to pray, provide you an Allen wrench. I believe it's a 3 30 second, uh, anyway, whatever the necessary wrench you're going to get with it. And these are going to have to be fairly tight. You want to check to be sure you're getting good motion. There's any loss of action in our basin, that's the problem. Then you're going to get a, uh, a metal clutch arm, hands and arms, with a cover. These two will actually be attached when you get them. You put it right over the stud here. These pads are your friction pads. Uh, to drive the unit, and you will not need to use the uh, friction device that Mead has given you already. Uh, on the other side of the scope, you have a friction, 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 <laughs> friction tension device. This is going to become your new tension clutch, because simply by tightening down on this knob, you're going to lock that thing in, and that will now be an adjustable friction for the for the elevation drive. So. Uh, you'll see the arm has a slot in it, and your this would be the elevation motor. And uh, you can zoom in on this. On the motor, we have three jacks here. This is a square jack. It's a jack for the hand control. The next jack is a charge jack for charging your battery. The next jack is the uh, jack for the uh, azimuth motors. And that's on a coil cord you'll bring around and plug in there. Now this the, this drive, the tangent arm drive, should you find you've gotten all the way down to one end of the travel, you don't want to back this motor up for 10 minutes. So by basically pressing this uh, button here, you can actually bring it back to center. And so what we typically would do on the uh, 16 inch light bridge, if you put this, if you mount this just above the light bridge, it would be the correct height there. And uh, so you install it right above the light bridge, drill your pilot holes again, and uh, you've got that taken care of. The cable then go, battery cable go in there, and the uh, power jack would, uh, from the motor would come out here as well and plug in. So uh, that basically takes care of, of that part. Um, in fact, I think we've got the, thing, the whole thing installed. Now, uh, because we're on the opposite side from the, I should say, with this, with this clutch drive, actually you can move the scope manually any place in the sky. The motors are going to drive it. You don't have to reach over and lock things in. You can set the tension on here so that it does both, allows you to move it manually, you can feel the motion, and yet the motors are going to drive it. And that's the beauty of the thing. You can move it all around the sky and let you let go. It's going to be able to control the speed of the, uh, the drive. Now, the problem is, of course, here you have this, all the power over here, and you're going to be viewing on the other side of the scope. So, uh, we're, we'll give you a couple of these little islets here, and uh, again, you drill a small hole. You can take your jack, uh, your, your islet, and that will hold the cable on the side of the, uh, the base where you're going to be doing your viewing. Uh, so I really think that about covers it. Um, it really is quite easy to install, actually, as you see. Uh, and so I hope nobody's been intimidated by the fact that you get all this metal iron parts that doesn't look at times it doesn't look at intimidating when you see the parts list and so forth. So uh, once again, I want to thank you for buying Jay my products. We have other products for the light bridges. We have motor focus, so you can take the vibration out of your focusing when you're trying to focus. We have a shroud that. Uh, you know, keeps the light out if you've got street lights and, and things like that to deal with. And uh, computers for finding objects in the sky. We'll find thousands of objects. A passive device simply points you into the star. Very user friendly. Uh, points you to the star with two arrows. You don't have to put in longitude, latitude, minutes, mean time. You can just put in, set, you know, it asks for a horizontal or vertical setting, and then you find two stars and you're up and running. So anyhow, we know you're going to enjoy a light bridge a lot more when you'll be able to. It, it, it's so wonderful just to have that object exploding in space without any vibration. I mean, you can actually observe and, and reset them without vibration. That's the thing I found that uh, is really that makes it a, a pleasure. So thank you again for uh, supporting JMI products.